short term, like I want to really offer you ladies uh, as much opportunity as possible to have really kind of to open your eyes to all the possibilities. You know, for instance, being here and seeing these amazing people uh, who are working on big things that touch a lot of people. You know, these magazines and these these sites and you guys touch a lot of people's lives every day. And so I think realizing that your passion for for fashion and for kind of the creative industries that we work in. Um, there's just so much you can do with it. Um, so I want to offer like as much kind of opportunities to to you ladies, but also you know I think big picture, I want to continue to grow it and scale this experience and this learning for as many young women as possible, um, but without losing kind of the high impact experience that we currently have in our classes because. 25 girls in each class uh, last summer, which everyone was in the class last summer. Are you guys taking class again this summer? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Amazing. Okay, so this summer we have our first ever 2.0 Code of Classy uh, curriculum, which is basically more front end, kind of more, well, you guys will see it firsthand, but it's, um, it's kind of more front end focused now that they have the fundamental skills. So I want to keep growing it without uh, losing kind of the special uh, I don't know, special kind of high impact experience that we have now. And also, you know, I think you guys are you guys are a big part of it. So um, whenever I am we're open to feedback, um, it's really a matter of like, I don't know, helping, helping these ladies as much as possible. And on that note, I'd love to leave the last question open to you guys. Does anyone have a question for Carly? Don't be shy now. I know. You went to her <laughs> course. She expects you to be exactly. fully, fully brave and empowered. All right. right well, I there. just want to make like a statement. Like I'm really thankful that you opened this program to us because it's really like you don't really see a lot of celebrities doing so many diverse things and then like sharing it with other people like us. So I just wanted to say thank you and it's inspiring to see that you did so much with like your career. You didn't just stay to modeling like. You're doing coding. I saw you with Bill Nye. Like you do so much. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you guys talk about Bill Nye. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Maybe yes. we can end on that. Totally. He's hysterical. He's a total nerd. <laughs> <laughs> um, but he's like a very suave nerd. Like he's like, uh, he's he's funny uh, and very, and he's a great teacher. He takes these like really complex topics and ideas and really makes them like understandable and and I think he was one of the first people who I watched on PBS like Bill Nye the science really? guy obviously uh, and and he really got me excited about these things so I think it's like having people that you have access to that you can relate to that can that I don't know that that can I'm not a scientist, I'm not an expert at anything I just have a passion for these industries and for these topics and um, you know, I think for me, it's like I feel so privileged to be in the position that I'm in and have the experiences I have as a model. You know, none of this was anything I foresaw in my in my life. Um, so I want to use this platform, use this voice that I've been privileged to have to help create opportunities for others, um, and in a space where I think there's tremendous opportunity. Um, so that's what drives me. You guys drive me. <laughs> I know, right? Yeah. <laughs> About a week. <laughs> it's only been a week. Which is not the regular. Yeah. <laughs> I know. Yeah. Old friends. Like, yeah. I know. Now we're like best friends. Yeah. Yeah. We were saying we That's see our like so we see you more than our college friends. friends. Like, um. Well, we've been best friends for a really long time. Now. <laughs> I mean, I see you guys more often than I see some of my friends. So we were, and I were just, just saying, saying that about our college friends. We're like, I haven't seen any of my college godmother. Who is my neighbor? Genuinely, we need to go visit them. Hi guys. Hi. So this is weird because I'm basically interviewing my boss. <laughs> so great. kind of the tables have turned. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I, I guess I want Arlie kind of talked a little bit about what Michelle's role is, but obviously editor in chief means something so different today than it did two years ago, five years ago, ten years ago, what are your job responsibilities? What is it like to be an EIC at Condé Nast? So many things. Um, so I'll actually kind of go backwards in time. So I'm actually, I, I'm 
positive, actually, that I'm older than everybody in this room. <laughs> so when I started out in this business, but she there, was, there was no digital. So um, my very first job was actually at Condé Nast. So I worked at Glamour at a time when there was an editor-in-chief named um, Ruth Whitney, and there was only the magazine. So as an editor-in-chief, at that point, you really just had that one thing. For me now, it's like I think that I view being an editor-in-chief as not just the magazine. Obviously, it's a big component of everything. But it's now thinking about a brand. We have not only our um, print media, digital media, we have brands um, and products like the Allure Beauty Box. We have events. We have so many different things. that I think that being an editor-in-chief these days, um, I always equate it to being like the director of a movie. So especially when I talk to people who have no idea what an editor-in-chief does, I've had a lot of people say to me, um, do you fix commas and misspellings? <laughs> and I'm like, yes, OK, that's a portion of my job. Um, but really, if you think about it in terms of being a director of a movie, you're kind of in charge of the overall um, vision of something. And then the producer is kind of like the publisher. Um, so really, I am the facilitator, innovator, and I view my job within digital as helping to remove roadblocks for these guys. <laughs> Which we greatly appreciate. <laughs> um, so if you had to compare yourself to a famous director. Um, oh, that's a good question. Right? Are you a Tarantino? It would be Patty Jenkins right now. Oh, okay, that's great. That's a good one. You guys know who Patty Jenkins is. Wonder Woman. Yes, mm -hmm. exactly. Like, she's she's number one you in the box a office. I think we can. Um, okay, so there's a famous editor-in-chief that all of us know, and her name is Miranda Priestly from The Devil Wears Prada. What do you have in common with Miranda Priestly? God, these are such good questions. Give this guy promotion. I've been dying for one in fact. <laughs> um, I would have okay, so, hair. <laughs> I can say I don't have a lot. In, I, I'll start with the opposite of that. I don't have a lot in common with her in that I think her attitude is probably the exact opposite of where I would like to be. And I would you agree. can attest to that. I would a lot agree. of people can attest to that. My job basically is making decisions all day long. Mm -hmm. So whether it's choosing images, whether it's proving layouts, whether it's looking at a video and getting feedback at it, um, I think that there's something about being decisive that, especially as a girl, um, I think that the way that we're raised sometimes, it's kind of like, and especially being Asian too, I think like there's this this feeling within the culture of being like, oh, I don't know. And I see my daughter doing this also. So I'm trying to teach her now, be decisive and make decisions. And whether you know what you're talking about or not sometimes, you have to make it seem like this is my decision and I'm sticking with it. So I think that when I first became um, more senior in my career, I really didn't know that. And it's like, it's one thing to understand feedback and like you really want to listen to everybody. But ultimately, as the boss, they're looking at you to make that decision and to, to feel really confident in it. Mm -hmm. So I think that, you know, again, like looking at Miranda, but then also people who I've worked with who are like that, it's, it's being decisive. Totally. Decisive is, is also important because you, you're relied on all the time to call the shots. But as a leader, you also are collaborative in the sense that you hear what people are saying before you jump the gun to make a decision. Yes. Can you talk about how you can lead collaboratively? Totally. So I think, um, like again, thinking about other people who I've worked with in the past who are, are micromanagers, right? I don't believe in that. Mm -hmm. I think that as a manager, what's really great is that you want to hire people who you believe in, and then you want to, again, like remove obstacles and let them do their jobs. So I think that for me, I really do see myself as like the big picture thinker, that as a manager, like there's no training ground. Like I don't know if you mm -hmm. felt this way also, but it's like, I think that as a journalist, a lot of times, like I went to journalism school, um, I at some point became like an associate level editor, became a senior editor. Suddenly I have staff under me. I'm like, I have no training in being a manager. Right. Suddenly you become an executive editor, and then suddenly you've got even more staff, mm -hmm. and then suddenly you become an editor in chief, and your job is not at all the same as it was before. It really is suddenly you're a manager of people, you're working with business and finance and marketing and ad sales and everything else. So I think that um, understanding how to manage people is something that a lot of times we kind of learn on the job. Um, what I would stress to all of you guys is the more that you can all learn business and marketing and just organizational and corporate structure, it's so helpful. So I, um, I just started, um, I'm leading the new mentorship program at Condé Nast. So we did a round table of all the mentees and like the number one thing from everybody about what they wanted to get out of the program was really understanding corporate structure. And even here, like our company is so huge that I come mm -hmm. over into this building sometimes and I'm like, I don't know if what everyone does over here. Right. So I think the more that you guys can learn that, on top of obviously um, learning about technology and science and everything else, 
I think it's always important, no matter what field you go into, whether or not you're gonna be self-employed even, for you to understand business and even just for your own personal finance. No matter what you decide to do in life, I feel like learning the things around those specific things is super helpful also. I mean, like Arlie was talking about the um, Vlore.com redesign and relaunch. So even though I was not physically the person um, designing the site, which absolutely Brooke would probably kill me, <laughs> but like I, I feel like the fact that I was able to speak the language of, um, I mean, I don't know if I could have like fully an intellectual conversation with the developers, but like the fact that I could use the language and understand what I was talking about, I feel like it makes, makes me a stronger editor. And then whatever it is that you do, the fact that you kind of have a basic understanding of all those things is, is super helpful. Right, so you can be involved in STEM with, and you can be a woman in STEM without necessarily having to be the expert coder or, exactly. or you know, even the person designing the site itself. Right? So when I was younger, my dad worked in computers and he would come home with these giant books that were all about different computer languages and he'd have to learn these computer languages. And I was like, that just seems like the most boring thing <laughs> possible. At some point when I was in high school, I think I turned myself off of science and math. Like I was that girl who was like, I'm creative. I don't care about technology and about, I mean, technology wasn't even a thing in, <laughs> in those days, but like, you know, I don't care about science and math. I'm gonna shut my brain off to those things. But I think that over time, I've actually realized how creative technology is and that content obviously is, is king and like you can't have a great um, successful website without having great content. Um, it's one of the big things of that like we really need to help change in other people. So I mean I think it's great that you guys are all doing that, but what I would urge too is that we need more young women thinking in that way. So, so, yeah. Me too. Yeah, it's so good. I know. It's really nice. The packaging. Yeah, that's a really good box. Yeah, I'm like, it's really. Oh, for NYSL. Oh my gosh. Yeah, I know. Partnerships. And one is like a. So we we sometimes partner. Um, so it's fully owned by us. Okay. This one we actually do partner with YSL. Two, four, six, six. We got a YSL item in there. Am I sorry? And that this is such a special experience for all of us. Hello everyone. So I just realized that as I'm editing this video in Turkey, so that's why I have like a webcam going on, I'm literally just editing. Um, I realized I accidentally deleted a lot of the footage from this day, which made me very sad. But I wanted to just say very quickly, thank you to Carly for inviting us to this crazy event because I know I know that myself as well as the other Code of Classy girls really appreciated hearing um, about women in STEM specifically because after um, these videos were taken, unfortunately I deleted the other ones for some reason, but there was some women in the STEM fields at Condé Nast talking about what they do and like what the life is like. So it was just really inspiring to see them talk about like their struggles as well as like how far they've come since uh, originally working. Uh, in STEM fields. So thank you to everyone who just made this event possible, but I personally am really inspired by all of the women that were at the event, especially Michelle Lee, because she just kind of talked about her position and like what it was like for her to go from a non-digital world to a digital world, which is something, you know, um, I kind of grew up with. She kind of grew up with more in like the sense when she was like looking for jobs, but I kind of grew up with it with my childhood. And it was just inspiring just hearing Carly talk, and I love Carly, as you all know. So I just wanted to make a quick little video because I felt like it would be weird if I just made an entire vlog without me actually in it because I'm an idiot who apparently deletes footage without checking to see if it's actually important to Final Cut Pro. So anyways, thank you so much for watching. I hope you guys have a great day. Uh, don't forget to subscribe, like, comment, and if you want to see more videos that are like vlogs or if you have specific questions about Code of Classy, please feel free to leave them in the comments below and I can make a Q&A type of video if you're interested in seeing that. So anyways, I'll see you guys in my next video and thank you for watching.